All right, folks, uh, in Maryland, uh, two district, two DAs, state's attorneys, are making it clear that they have a do not call list. No, not when it comes to uh, scam calls, but when it comes to police officers who they will not call to the stand because they frankly are uh, untrustworthy. Uh, Marilyn Mosby uh, in Baltimore. As made it clear, she has a list. So is Aisha Brave Boy, uh, of course, the Prince George's County State's Attorney, who joins us right now. Uh, and they released this particular list. Glad to have um, uh, State's Attorney Brave Boy back uh, on Roller Martin Unfiltered. So walk us through this. I mean, these are officers who have such credibility issues. You can't trust them testifying. Unfortunately, that is correct. There are officers who have conducted themselves in a manner uh, that is just outside of their duties, uh, where we, as the state attorney's office, has to have to send a strong message that certain activities and behaviors of officers will be unacceptable. And if they continue to remain on the force, they will not be called in cases that our offices prosecutes. Um, can you, uh, when you say behavior, what does that mean? So there are uh, officers who have lied in cases, lied to get people arrested. There are officers who are racist, homophobic, and sexist. And these officers uh, do not represent the vast majority of officers on our police departments. Uh, they disrespect their profession and their oath of office. And so from our perspective, that these are people who have disqualified themselves uh, from serving our communities, and we will not call them to testify uh, as witnesses in our cases. What, what are these chiefs saying? How are these folks still even on the force? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I think that when we sent a notice uh, to the police department earlier this year that we would no longer be calling these individuals, I want to commend our department and our administration uh, for uh, removing these officers from the streets. Now, what they decide to do with them is their uh, choice. Uh, what we have said is that we will not call them. And so they are no longer actively participating in cases because uh, the department knows that we are not calling them as witnesses. So they would certainly be problematic if they were uh, handling cases, arresting individuals, or, uh, you know, filing police reports. How many are we talking in Prince George's County? How many in Baltimore? We have about 57 in Prince George's County. The majority of them are not active officers, uh, but we believe it was important to uh, have our entire list uh, uh, available because some of these officers uh, will try to go to different departments to get jobs. And so we want to ensure that everyone understands that these officers are not credible individuals, that they should not be trusted, and that they have again, disqualified themselves from serving in this capacity in our communities. And so we have about 57 officers, um, about 12, uh, 12 of, um, our, from our municipalities, and the rest are Prince George's County police officers. Um, we have about 17 of them that are still on the force. Now, some of them have pending criminal charges, and so those uh, cases have to be tried and after the outcome of those cases, we'll determine whether or not they will stay on the list. But for right now, they are on the list because we cannot credibly call them as witnesses in cases. All right. State's Attorney Aisha Brave Boy, we still appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right. Kelly, this is the kind of stuff when we talk about, you know, all these, all these uh, people who get mad about defund the police. Uh, it's amazingly how silent they are when you have di district attorneys who make it clear they cannot trust what these individuals have to say. I mean, yeah, this is, you know, something that I was kind of surprised to hear about, but I'm glad that it is not a dynamic between the police and the, the district attorney's office such that, you know, uh, traditionally, they would work in tandem no matter what the cost, right? But now we have uh, DAs who are 
trying to hold both parties accountable, both, you know, their own attorneys and the police department accountable for their actions. Thankfully, a lot of these officers are not on the force anymore, but it does show you just how um, perverse the corruption has been, how biased these police officers have been over the course of years. Who knows how many cases they worked that, you know, was was not in uh, anyone's favor but their own. So I'm interested to see what the outcome of future cases are going to be now that this list is out there and just how accountable both parties will be to the public. Well, and uh, what's interesting, again, as I said, uh, Cleo, uh, when, when you have these police unions who get real quiet about this, mm -hmm. all of these <laughs> folks who holler back the blue, it's amazing how quiet they are as well. Well, this makes me smile because even though Mosby is everybody's uh, legal force and source, she symbolizes what black power looks like and symbolizes what happens when somebody who cares about black people are in a de decision-making role that, that, that impacts policy and how things are rolled out. Because even though her job is to take care of every, everybody, and she does, she's inspired by the murder of Gray and, these other, and, and what happened to those cops and, and the constant discovery of corruption among cops, and she's not having it. And I am aware of other people in her position across the country who are, who, who are having it, who do allow this. So it's, so it's just wonderful that this is what black power looks like. Um, black power is responsible for everybody, but that ensures that issues that are disproportionately affected us are taken care of. And this is why she's controversial. And this is why she's always dealing with petty stuff, like she has a, she, she did something wrong by owning property somewhere on the planet, which is not illegal. So I just want to Will underscore that that's why she's controversial and underscore that this is what black power looks like and why it's important to look at voting from a local level instead of waiting for the next Biden, wherever people are going to jump behind and up for the president and look at how what happens when these people like her have a, can make decisions for us. And of Michael, course, the, uh, the thing that uh, Michael, the thing here when we talk about accountability. Uh, and then mm -hmm. also folks talk about credibility and, and trust and trust the police and uh, folks want to give them even more power. I mean, not a single one of these officers should have a badge and a gun when you say that a prosecutor cannot trust putting them on the stand. I remember uh, in Chicago last year where there was a judge they got sick and tired of and he literally reported to the oversight board of eight cops who consistently lied on his stand. Uh, and he said, right. how are the people still on the force? I mean, this was a judge who said they, they kept lying. Uh, this wasn't the jury, this was a judge who said he, he got sick and tired of it as well. I mean, this is pervasive, but again, it's the, oh no, they're just a few bad apples. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Roland, it, 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 right here we have 91 bad apples. I don't know how many barrels these bad apples are in, but you have 91. And this is uh, the hit on Cleo's point. This is an example of how elections have consequences. These prosecutors, and this is something people have been realizing over the past few years, prosecutors are elected. These bad prosecutors, you can vote them out of office, okay? Yep. Uh, 67 have been convicted of crimes or face internal affairs investigations, but you got 23 that have pending criminal cases. So, so one of the questions I ask is like, okay, so wait a second. These, these officers that have been convicted. Uh, are there cases being investigated where they've gotten people convicted and they testified previously? Is that being investigated? Uh, and this is another example of why many of us need to apply to these police departments and become the officers that we say we want to see. It's clearly some bad people out there, some bad officers out there. And is a, there's a system like the Fraternal Order Police in some police unions that protect these bad officers. So this is good. We need more prosecutors like Marilyn Mosby. But also, when these officers get convicted and things like this, we need to have the right people to take these officers' place, as well as the white supremacists uh, who keep getting uh, kicked out of police departments, some of them as well. Um, absolutely. absolutely. I, I just, again, to watch this consistently unfold, 
um, is, 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 is amazing uh, and, just, and it just continues and continues and continues. And again, you hear all the cute excuses of what we mm -hmm. can and cannot do and what we shouldn't do. But uh, bottom, bottom line here, uh, action has to be taken. Folks, back to our Roadblock Unfiltered video in just one moment. Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a black man owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, wow, rolling was amazing on that. Stay black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?